CDC, Social Security Office of Disability Adjudication and Review. Review all options before a selection. Press or say one now. Please dial your party's extension now. Calling two three nine five zero. Mailbox four one four one two two three nine five zero. Please record your message after the tone. So this is part four. So with all your malicious acts, I've shown all the malicious acts that your agency has done. And I was trying to give your office a second chance, trying to get it right at the hearings office. So hopefully I thought perhaps uh, everything else was, which was done earlier was done by the Maryland Disability Dis uh, DDS and you know, not Social Security itself. But it becomes very clear that Social Security is involved because at first Social Security changed my case from a disability case to a SSI case. And why is that? Well, the reason is the people who cause the injuries want to keep me in the SSI program so I go through Medicaid as opposed to uh, having my freedom with Medicare. Now I do realize with Medicare I have to actually pay a lot of out-of-pocket out expenses but for the big ticket I for the big ticket items you know I can use Medicare so and they wanted to keep me in Medicaid so they struggled really hard to keep me in Medicaid so that's why your office changed my case to a SSI case now can you contest that you you changed my case to SSI when I rightfully applied for the regular disability and and that was to get me into the Medicaid which I don't want to be in since that's the program where they have the doctors who are keeping this going. If I have Medicare, I can, you know, I can get my own medical care uh, and for, I can pay for it. And then for the big items, you know, I can actually get Medicare to pay for it. And okay, so uh, you deprived me of that right. And then after, so, so, so that was something Social Security did at an earlier time, but I was still willing to call it, it was just something done by the DDS Maryland office. But now it's very clear that I gave you the chance, you know, for the hearing to, and I submitted the evidence, and you all just threw my evidence out and you didn't input it. And you also want to get me into the hearing without my evidence. You want to get me into the hearing without the subpoenas and my witnesses who can show the facts. Why is it your office doesn't want those witnesses to show up? Why is it? Did you commit the crimes? Why is it? that your office does not want the witnesses, some of them possibly committed the crimes, and the others helped cover it up and kept it going. So I wanna know why your office does not want those people showing up. So I wanna know why it is your office does not want those people showing up. Please record your message after the tone. 
So this becomes part five. And I think when I called the person who answered the phone, she would have no reason to transfer my call to anyone else. She's not the receptionist. It only comes her name as receptionist because that's how the phone system is built. But she's completely involved with the cases. And so if it's an issue of something being received and not received and for me to resend it, uh, all these and to get a continuance to get this done, all these things should be done by her. And she would have no reason to transfer the call to you. Now I know why she transferred the call to you, Natalie. She transferred the call to Natalie because um, she ran out of lies. So she didn't have any more lies she could make up at that point. So she transferred the call to you. And when I left a message for you, and, and of course, you didn't answer the call when I called you. And I left a message and you didn't answer. You didn't call me right back and tell me what's going on. You waited one full day after you had all the opportunity to go ahead and collaborate and plan and scheme on how to come back and lie to me. See, I have a big problem when people call me, you know, when I ask them a simple question, you know, what happened to the letter I sent or what's going on with my hearing and they need one full day to get together with other people and figure out what to say. So that means you're, you're cooking up a lie. If you're being honest, you can just give me the answer when I ask you the question. So, and you did not, and she did not. She transferred me over to your office, and then you took another full day. That's not how answers have come by. I mean, that looks like you're trying to make up a lie. So, you know, I need your aunt, I need your office to act honestly, and I want to know how far up it goes. Does it go up to Andrew Emerson? And I will post this on YouTube, and I will say that Andrew Emerson is a sex offender, that Andrew Emerson is a pervert, Andrew Emerson is a criminal, Andrew Emerson is a sex offender. We know how my injuries came. It came while I was going for a simple MRI test, and some people committed a crime and committed injuries to commit a sexual assault which makes Andrew Emerson a pervert. And I am going to put this recording on YouTube and I am going to name Andrew Emerson. I don't have your na last name, Natalie. If I can get your last name, I... Four time remaining. Please continue recording your message after the beep. If I can get your last name and I can get the person who answered the phone call at the beginning, uh, I can go ahead on YouTube and label them as sex offenders too. And you can come and take me to court and we can kind of, kind of find out who's right.